So now let's talk about the Ravel, and I'm going to explain what do I mean by Ravel. So as you can see, first of all, we have imported NumPy as in P, and also we have defined a two-dimensional array, I mean a matrix, which you can see the first row is 1, 2, 3, and the second row is 4, 5, 6. And remember that when I say Ravel, I mean I want to flatten these values. I mean, I don't care about the shape of the of this matrix, but I will just want the values inside this matrix. And I want to store all the values inside this matrix in a one-dimensional array, like a list. So for example, I want to get an output like this, for example, one, two, three, and four, five, six. So I want to ravel, I want to flatten, I want to get all the values inside the X matrix, and I want to convert them into a one dimensional ar array, or let's say something like a list. So in order to do so, that's very easy. I can simply type X dot ravel. And for example, I store the results in a variable, let's say called Y. And now if I print the Y variable, and if I run the code, you can see here is uh, the output. And, I, and as you can see, we have flattened uh, these values and we have get this output. And let's talk about a very important note. And that note is this, that you should remember that the output of the Ravel function is a view. So if you don't know about what is the difference between view and deep copy, you should watch the corresponding part of this series, which we have talked about view and deep copy and etc. So that's it. So remember that this returns a view. So as a matter of fact, for example, if I change the value, at index 0 to, for example, 1000 in the Y variable, because the output is view, you can see that if I print the Y variable, and also if I print the X variable, but remember that we haven't changed the X variable, but because this is a view, because the Ravel returns a view, so if I run a code, you can see the X itself has also changed because the Ravel function returns a view, not a deep copy. So when I'm changing the Y variable, the X variable is also changing because they are view of each other. And also let's talk about another note. And that note is you can write this one with a function in the NumPy package as well. So you can simply type np dot Ravel, and you can use the Ravel function, and you want to Ravel the X, and for example, you want to sort that, the result I mean, in a variable, let's say, called Y. So these two lines are equivalent. So for example, here, if I print the Y variable, and let's delete one of them, and if I run the code, you can see here's uh, the output. But here is a question that you may ask, and that question is, here we are flattening all this stuff row-wise. I mean, we are putting the values in the first row, then the values in the second row. Maybe you say I want to put all the values in the first column, then the second column, then the third column, and etc. So you want to do all this stuff column-wise. How can we do it? In order to do that, we can simply pass another argument, which is called order, and we want to use a column-wise uh, format, so we should pass f means Fortran-like. So if I run a code, you can see here are the values in column-wise format. You can see 1, 4, then the second column, 2, 5, and then the third column, 3, 6, so that's it. And for example, if you pass a C, which is uh, the default argument, which is the default argument. When I say default argument, it means that if you delete this, it is equivalent to passing order equals to C. So if I run a code, you can see it does all this stuff in the row-wise manner. And remember that, as I have told you, this Ravel function in the NumPy package is equivalent to the Ravel method. So here we can also pass an argument which is called order, and you can use, for example, f in order to uh, do all this stuff in column-wise manner. And for example, if I run the code, you can see here is the output. So remember that both the Ravel function in the NumPy package and this Ravel method has an argument which is called order, which defines the order in order to fill the values in that one-dimensional array. So now let's talk about the flatten function. And the flatten function is very similar to the Ravel function. So here if I simply type x.flatten, and if I store the results in a variable, let's say called 
y. And now if I print the y variable, and if I run the code, you can see the output is exactly the same as the ravel function. So the flatten function is very similar to the ravel function. And also, like the ravel function, it has an argument which is called order, which you can pass f in order to do all this stuff in column-wise manner, and also we can pass C in order to do all this stuff in row-wise manner. And remember that order equals to C is the default argument. But the difference between the flatten function and the ravel function is this, that the flatten function returns a deep copy, not a view. So here, for example, if I change the value at index 0 of the y variable, and for example, let's change it to 1000. And here, if I print the y variable, and also let's print the x variable. And if I run the code, you can see the y variable has changed. You can see the value at index 0 has changed in the y variable. But you can see that the value that none of the values in the x variable has changed because you know this is this returns a deep copy, not a view. Now I really suggest you to watch this video, which is on the screen now.